Let's do a real-time photo process. This was from this morning, epic sunrise this morning. I happened to be outside and saw that pink just starting to come up across the horizon. Ran inside for the camera and took some shots. So I thought, why not get on here and let's just do a real-time photo edit. This is straight out of the camera. Uh, 1 one sixtieth of a second, f5.6, ISO 500. I usually keep the ISO at 100, but so dark not enough light for ISO 100 so I pumped it up to 500 so I could do handheld shutter speed at 1 1 60th of a second. I like this one because we have that wave coming up over we have the water in the roadway that's reflecting these clouds and has these I don't know I just love these long like lines in the sky and how those are reflected in the water below so let's see what we can do with this photograph you can see in the bottom timeline here there are some others from this morning but let's focus on this one for right now so here's my basic process i'm just going to talk through it as i do it here i'm in the global settings the global edit settings and i typically start by coming down here and just enabling lens corrections lightroom will see which lens you had on your camera in this case it's the ef 24 to 70 f 2.8 from canon and then i remove aberrations we could do a whole video on removing those uh, if that button doesn't work and what they are but we'll do that in a different video okay so we have that um, the next thing I do is white balance and I like to make it look as close to how it did in person I shoot in a neutral raw format and so the colors typically just don't show up all that well they're muted and you know just not not showing up as they did in real life once you're in Lightroom now. Also, I am a little bit colorblind <laughs> with, with reds and greens and pinks and purples. So sometimes the way I see it is different than the way you might see it. And so if you see something I do and you're like, dude, that's messed up. It's like, well, yeah, it probably is. <laughs> yeah, it probably is. But it's also what makes me me. So I own it. Um, so that said, with white balance, we can take it as shot. Or we can just start playing with it and see what auto does. Auto's really going to cool it off. You can see here the, the number 3600, the lower the number, the cooler or more blue it is. The higher the number, the warmer or more orange slash yellow it is. So this particular morning was, I think, kind of a like orangey, peachy, pinky morning. And so we can do these, some of these presets and just see. I have a feeling daylight's going to be pretty good. Yeah, that's awfully close. That's awfully close to how it was. So we could do daylight. Cloudy is going to be even warmer. It's probably too warm. Daylight versus cloudy. You can see it's a it's 5,500 versus 6,500. I'm going to go with daylight for now. Now, the next thing you can do is you can go up to the top and click auto. I'll typically do that just to see what Lightroom thinks the photo should look like and, and process it from there. Sometimes not, but in this case, I want to hit auto. You can just see how it just brightens it up, brings up the exposure, brings up the shadows, and that's cool. I will definitely work with that. I don't want to necessarily select only the sky in this case. I'm going to go down here to midtones. I'm going to pull some of those midtones out, and then I'm going to pull up some of the highlights. I like that. On most photos that I process, I go in and bring the clarity down because it's just a softer look. You can see what happens when you pull it up. It's a cool look. I kind of prefer it to be just a little softer but at the same time I pull up the texture and that'll just bring out the little like the more minute details like in that sea spray and in the rocks and that sort of thing dehaze I like to do some negative dehaze just see how it brightens it up and softens it up now if you add dehaze it adds saturation and a little more clarity and contrast there's, you know, there's a place for that, and I used to do it a lot, but these days I kind of prefer to add negative dehaze because I really like that, kind of that soft glow of a look, especially for a morning, morning photograph like that. I like to add some vignetting, to kind of pull the eye from the edges down to the middle of the photograph. And that's nice. That's nice. That looks pretty good. Uh, we can try. I don't know if I want to get too much into that. Um, we can try masking and just see what happens if we select the sky. 
Okay, here, so this is a common problem, especially if you happen to be shooting waves and there's a big wave spray and you select the sky, it's gonna select the wave spray also. And then if you if you like pull out the highlights or you bring the exposure down, it's just gonna, it's also gonna bring down the exposure and highlights of that wave spray, which just looks super unnatural. And I don't like that. So a way around that, there's a couple ways around that is instead of selecting the sky, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that mask. Instead of selecting the sky, you could do a linear gradient. I like to hold the shift key so that stays um, ver uh, horizontal. And then you can pull that down. And so that's gonna do a gradient mask from the top toward the bottom here. And then we can pull out some highlights or bring down some exposure can see how it really only affects the the top because it's a gradient um, so I don't know I don't love that one in this case so I'll delete that one and so maybe masking isn't the answer on this one maybe we want to go down uh, where's our color section we can go down to colors and we can pick say we want to play with these colors here Lightroom will identify that here and then we can pull up the luminance or bring down the luminance. And I like this way because when we select sky, it won't impact the reflection, but if we choose the colors, it does. So then we can bring that luminance down just a little bit. We could even bring the saturation up just a tiny bit if we want to. Um, yeah, that's probably good. I don't want to do that too much because Oversaturated photos do not look good in my opinion. So I don't like to oversaturate too much. And sometimes I'll even pull the overall saturation of the photo down. Just so we have a more natural look. I feel like the shadows are a little dark still, but see how it's... So this was a pretty underexposed photograph because it's brought up the shadows to plus 48. I might bring them up just a little more. You're going to be careful when you do that because it can expose some noise in the photo. So you don't want to do that too much. Um, I might want to get rid of those people and I would do that in Photoshop and I can show you how to do that. I might pull up the whites a little bit. There we go. It's starting to look better. Yeah, I like that. So let's see, I want to show you the before and after. So I'm just going to duplicate this photo. That's so just going to create another version of it here. And then I can take that and then just reset the edits. So that's where we started. And that's where we wound up. Pretty significant. And I'd say this is still a little bit oversaturated. So I might pull some of the saturation out of that sky. And look more like that. If we want to get rid of these people, let's do that real quick. What I'll do is right click and edit in Photoshop. And so then it's going to think for a minute. Okay, so now we have Photoshop open. And I'll select, actually first I'm going to select uh, the zoom. And I'm going to zoom in on these people. You can see it's pretty noisy. Um, but I'm okay with that in this case. You know, some of that noise is just natural in a photograph. You can go in and denoise it. Sometimes that just adds a, makes it look more like a, a cartoon or a painting. And so sometimes I don't like to do that. Sometimes I do. It just depends on the photo. I'm going to leave the noise in this one because it just doesn't bother me. But if you go in here and select healing, this doesn't always work. And this is live, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. Because sometimes Photoshop just buggers it up and it doesn't work very well. But if we just make a selection around the objects or people that we don't want there anymore. We just select them and then see if Photoshop fills in that space. Did an okay job there, especially because we're so zoomed in. And then if we want to, like we can fine tune it. Yeah, that looks good. We can go like this better. And then we can fine tune it with our clone stamp. We push option. We select an area that we want to clone. Actually, let's select down here. And then we can just rebuild that in there. It'll look something like that. And we'll do that down here. 
I'm going to be careful with clone because it, it, it makes it pretty obvious sometimes. Like if you select, like if we select this spot with these lines, anywhere we post those exact lines are going to be repeated. And so then you start to get repeating patterns in your photo. And that's a pretty clear indication that there's been some post-processing happening. So I try to avoid that. And look, in this case here, you can see that those, those three different areas of rocks show up. So I'd like to avoid that. Or even if I do clone that one, I'm just going to go in and I can push the, um, the brackets and make my selection size smaller. And so then I'll just push option, select a different area, and then just go get rid of those so it doesn't look like it's been cloned too much. Now, this is not perfect. However, if we zoom back out of our photograph, it looks significantly better. And if I'm just sharing this online, yeah, that's cool. If I were to put this on the website and offer it for sale, uh, I'd go in there and really clean that up better so that it doesn't look um, quite, so you can just see some artifacting. Not a huge deal in this case as an example and for something that I might share online. So to save that, we're simply gonna close it. We're gonna push save. Photoshop is gonna close and that's gonna open the new version of what we just did in Lightroom. And there it is. So there's a quick version. Uh, if you want to export it, you can just click your uh, your export button up here. Export it as a, a small JPEG if we're sharing it online. Share it in whatever folder makes sense. Hit export. And now you've got a JPEG instead of a raw image of this photograph. So there you go. A quick live process of a photograph that went from here to start to here to end. Let me know if you have any questions. If you would have done anything differently, let me know in comments. I'm always curious about the workflow of others and the taste of others and what you might have done with this photo instead. Please subscribe. If you haven't, I'd love to have you on board. Uh, this was a fun little video, and we have a lot more of these coming and some more adventures. So hope to have you on board. Thank you.